Hello all, and welcome back to another The Walrus Does a pub quiz. So this week we have a general knowledge quiz that was read out in the beginning of March and uh, it has a number of different rounds as all quizzes should do. What I've done this time is I've actually attached the downloadable quiz sheet itself. So this is what I provide to the participants to the quiz along with the anagrams and, and picture round. So you actually can fill in as you go. So you can see exactly how many questions for each round there are. Um, so that's with it this week. We've got a, an, a glorious dingbats round. Now dingbats are one of those things that not everybody quite understands. Now I'm going to put up an example of one in a second. So this one here is Dr. Doolittle. So essentially, if you are somebody who enjoys a good dad joke or awful puns, you'll probably find dingbats reasonably easy to get your head around. So be prepared, that is going to be a thing. <laughs> However, as well as that, we've also got our picture around this week, um, carrying on a little bit of ridiculous um, with our swear or chair from our last general knowledge one, we have our picture round where you need to tell me whether it is a baking implement, is it a cooking tool, is it used in the kitchen, or is it a sex toy? So let's see how filthy your minds are for this one. So we're going to start off our quiz this week with a round on flowers. And I will freely admit I wrote this quiz partly after I had been doing a lot of work in my garden, so it may or may not have totally and utterly shaped what questions I asked. So, question one of a floral round. There are, there are 15 questions in this round. Number one, surrounded by white petals, what colour is the central part of the head of most daisies? Question two. Which flower shares its name with the forename of the companion played by Billy Piper in Doctor Who? Question 3. The alternative name for which plant is the trefoil, deriving from the fact that most of them have three leaves? Question 4. In which ancient people's religion was Flora the goddess of flowers and the spring? Question 5. Saffron comes from what kind of flower? Question 6. Who did Flora MacDonald escape to France from Scotland in 1746? Yeah, bamboozle question there. I mean, she's called Flora. It's floral enough. Number 7. Which flower is often called the winter rose or Christmas rose? Number 8. Which queen was portrayed by Flora Robson in the films Fire Over England and The Seahawk? You didn't think there was only going to be one bamboozle question, did you? <laughs> Number nine. What term is used for plants which take two years to grow from seed to fruition and then die? Number ten. Which plant shares its name with a brass instrument used to play the army call The Last Post? Number 11. Which flower was once more costly than gold and has bulbs that can replace onions in some recipes? Number 12. Which flower, according to legend, bloomed everywhere that Lord Buddha walked? And these days its seeds can be eaten raw and its stamens dried to produce a fragrant tea. Number 13. Which blue flower of the genus Veronica is also the name of the ship that was to accompany the Mayflower with the Pilgrim Fathers? Number 14. Which daisy-like flower, the national flower of Mexico, gets its name from an 18th century Swedish botanist? And number 15. Which popular Christmas plant with red flowers gets its common name from the first American minister to Mexico? Okay, moving on. We've got the Caribbean. So we've got 10 questions all on the Caribbean. Starting with number 1. The Caribbean islands of Aruba, Curaçao, and St. Martin are overseas territories of which country? Number two. France has two overseas dominions in the Caribbean. Martinique is one. What is the other? 
Number three. Which group of islands, a major offshore shipping and financial centre, were named by Sir Francis Drake after a relative of the crocodile? Question four. Which island, home to Haiti and the Dominican Republic, shares its name with a ship in Robert Louis Stevenson's Treasure Island? Number five. Which island is combined with St. Christopher or St. Kitts, in the name of a Caribbean country. Number six. What black liquid deposit can be found southwest of Trinidad and is the largest deposit of this liquid worldwide? Number seven. The world's longest runway can actually be found in the Caribbean. True or false? Number eight. Being so close to the equator, what seasons are experienced in the Caribbean? Number nine. What percentage of the world's coral reefs can be found in the Caribbean? Is it 9%? Is it 11%? Is it 13%? Or 15%? And number ten. How many active volcanoes are present in the Caribbean? Are there 11? 17? 19, 22, or 31. And moving on to our next round, a 10 question round called Name That Year. Number one, in which year was Bill Clinton inaugurated as US President? Number two, in which year of the 19th century did Krakatoa spectacularly erupt? Number three, in which year did the first Simpsons cartoon short air? Number four, in which year did Bulgaria and Romania join the European Union? Number five, in which year did a great plague break out in London which was only brought to an end by the Great Fire the following year? Number six, in which year did the Suez Crisis take place and Russian troops enter Hungary to quash a liberalising government? Number seven, in which year were the first modern Olympics Games staged and Canada experienced a gold rush on the Klondike? Number eight, in which year did King Edward VIII abdicate the British throne? Number nine, in which year were the Khmer Rouge driven from power in Cambodia and Idi Amin toppled from power in Uganda? And number ten, in which year was Nelson Mandela sentenced to prison in South Africa, Nikita Khrushchev toppled from power in Russia, and Beatlemania sweeping America? Moving on, we have our next round, all on the human body. So, number one. Which section of the large intestine shares its name with a punctuation mark? Number two. Where in the body are the metatarsal bones to be found? Number three, the adjective hepatic means pertaining to which organ of the human body? Number four, which is the most common eye colour with over half of the global population having it? Number five, which vein brings blood back from the brain through the neck to the heart? Number six, what is the anatomical name for the thigh bone? Number seven. The pericardium is a sac containing which organ of the body? Number eight. The deltoid muscle covers the top of which joint in the human body? Number nine. There are three types of blood cell. Red blood cells or euthrocytes. White blood cells, leukocytes, are two of them. What is the third? And number ten. Behind what external feature of the body can the superior, middle, and inferior meatus and superior, middle, and inferior concha be found? Moving on, we have British landmarks. So apologies for those of you who may not very well be from the United Kingdom, as you may find this a little more challenging. Number one, what is the official name of Big Ben? Number two, which animals are the Kelpies sculptures of? Number three, the Angel of the North stands aside which A road? 
Number four. Which Scottish viaduct was used as a filming location for the Harry Potter movies? Number five. What is the name of the volcano on which Edinburgh Castle stands? Number six. Where can you find Durdledore? Number seven. Which is the furthest northern fortification built by the Romans in the UK? Number eight. In which county would I find the Eden Project? Number nine. On which isle can I find Fingal's Cave? And number ten. Where can I find the Needles? Okay, we have two more rounds remaining. We have our Crime and Punishment and our... Which might give you a clue as to the letter to which the answer of every question is. Anyway, starting with Crime and Punishment. Question one. What nickname was given to American prisoner Robert Franklin Stroud due to his ornithological hobby whilst incarcerated? Number two. Which male and female criminal duo, subject of a 1967 film, were ambushed and killed by law officers in May of 1934? Number three. Which former East Enders star served ten years in prison for the murder of a West German taxi driver? Number four. With which sort of offence might you find a Denver boot being employed? Number five. What form of trial was introduced by William I after conquering England? Number six. Who was the last person to be sentenced to death in the UK? And you can also gain a bonus point because there are actually two people who were uh, sentenced to death. So if you can name both of them, give yourself a point. You only need to answer one of them for the main point. Number seven. A Judas chair would typically cause an ever-widening wound. Where on the body? Number eight. How far would somebody undergoing an ordeal by fire have to walk carrying a red-hot iron bar? Is it three meters? five meters or ten meters number nine if you sank during your witchcraft accusation trial which verdict would be given and number ten which religious group was forced to pay 20 pounds a month if they refused to attend services in the protestant church and now to our final round <laughs> essentially all of the answers here begin with the letter f so number one, which imperial unit of measurement is the equivalent of 220 yards? Number two, the drug digitalis is obtained from which flower? Number three, what's the medical name for the shin bone? Number four, which country is known as Suomi in its native language? Number five, which king of Saudi Arabia was assassinated by his nephew in 1975? Number six. The Scottish Lament, the Flowers of the Forest, is about the dead of which battle? Number seven. In politics, what term is used to describe speaking at an inordinate length in an attempt to block the passage of legislation? Number eight. What was the name of the criminal penguin in the Wallace and Gromit film, The Wrong Trousers? Number nine. By what name is the medieval mathematician Leonardo of Pisa also known? And number ten. What surname is shared by the discoverer of penicillin and the creator of James Bond? Okay, so it's now time to go over some answers for you all. So, we're starting with our floral round. Number one is yellow. Two is rose. Three, clover. Four, the Romans. Five, saffron comes from crocuses. Number six is a Bonnie Prince Charlie, otherwise known, Prince Charles Edward Stuart. Number seven is the hellebore. Eight is Queen Elizabeth I. Number nine is biennial. Number ten is the bugle. Eleven, tulips. Twelve is the lotus. Thirteen is the speedwell. Fourteen is the dahlia. And number 15 is the Ponsettia. Moving on to our Caribbean questions. They are all overseas territories of the Netherlands. 
So Holland will be an acceptable answer. Number two, Guadeloupe is the other overseas department that France has. Number three, the Cayman Islands. Four is Hispaniola. Five is Nevis. Six is Asphalt, which, to be fair, and until maybe about 10, 15 years ago, I genuinely didn't realise that it was naturally occurring. I thought it was a byproduct of oil production. So, you know, it, which is ridiculous considering my interest in uh, paleontology and, and failure to understand what the La Brea tar pits were. Number seven, it's false. It's actually the location of the shortest runway, a 400 meter long runway. Which is kind of terrifying, really. Number eight, there are two seasons, a dry season from mid-December to mid-April and a wet season from mid-April to mid-December. Number nine, there are 9% of the world's coral reefs can be found there. And 10, there are 19 active volcanoes currently present in the Caribbean. Into name that year, number one was 1993. Number two, Krakatoa spectacularly erupted in 1883. Number three, 1987 was the first time The Simpsons cartoon aired. Number four was 2007. Five, the Great Plague broke out in London in 1665, and of course in 1666, the Great Fire of London, which annihilated most of the plague. I think it only killed maybe a dozen people. It was actually it was very low numbers of deaths, but then again, you know, reporting from 400 years ago, that's a thing. Anyway, number six, the Suez Crisis and Russian troops entered Hungary in 1956. Number seven, the first Olympic modern games was 1897. Number eight, in 1936 was the year that King Edward VIII abdicated the British throne. Number nine, 1979. And number 10 is 1964. On to the human body. Number one is the colon. Number two is the foot. Three, liver. Four, brown. They are the most common eye colour. Five is the jugular vein. Number six is the femur. Number seven is the heart. Eight, the shoulder. Nine, the third blood type of blood cell is a platelet. And number ten is the nose. Surprising amount of different like bone structures in the nose, but there we go. On to British landmarks. The official name of Big Ben is the Elizabeth Tower. Big Ben is actually the bell. So number two, the Kelpies are sculptures of horses. Three is the A1, just outside of Newcastle, upon time. Number four is the Glenfinnan Viaduct. Five, Castle Rock. Number six, in the, on the Jurassic Coast. Seven is the Antonine Wall. Eight, you can find the Eden Project in Cornwall. Number nine, the Isle of Staffa in Scotland. And number ten, you can find them on the Isle of Wight. On to the Crime and Punishment round. The nickname given to the American prisoner was the Birdman of Alcatraz. Number two is Bonnie and Clyde. Number three is Leslie Grantham. Four, parking infringements. It's a nickname for a wheel clamp. So I'll accept anything that's involving parking. Number five, trial by combat was introduced by William I. Six is Peter Anthony Allen and Gwyn Owen Evans. They were both executed on the 7th of April, 1964. Number seven, a Judas chair, well, it's quite savage. It would cause wounds on the nether regions. So I'll leave that one up to your interpretation on how you uh, want to describe that one. <clears throat> anyway, number eight, three meters or nine feet is how far you would have to un walk un and undergoing a ordeal by fire. Interestingly enough, in the times of ordeals, there was even an ordeal by cake where you had to eat the entire thing without choking. That's all I know about it, unfortunately. Number nine, you would be given an innocent verdict if you sank. 
Number 10, Catholics during Elizabeth I's reign were ordered to pay £20 a month if they didn't want to go to services in the Protestant church. And uh, that's quite a substantial sum. And now to our final round, foo. Number one is a furlong. Number two is a foxglove. Three is the fibula. Four, Finland. Five is Faisal. Six is Flodden, the Battle of Flodden Field. Seven is filibustering. Eight is Feathers McGraw. Nine is Fibonacci. And number ten is Fleming. On to our dingbats. So there are 15 dingbats questions. So number one is good looking. Number two is it's a small world after all. Three is right between the eyes. Four is criminal. Five is a fork in the road. Six, potatoes. Seven, within reason. Eight, missing link. Nine, postman. Ten, no two ways about it. Eleven, son of a gun. Twelve, made in Great Britain. Thirteen, another time, another place. Fourteen, honour among thieves. And fifteen is a mother-in-law. On to the picture round. So, number one is a baking implement. It's a cookie batter applicator, apparently. Number two is a sex toy. Number three is also a sex toy. Four is a kitchen tool for juicing lemons. Five, it's a sex toy. It's a paddle. Six is a yolk separator. Yeah, get your mind out of the gutter. Seven is a lettuce chopper. Eight is a sex toy. Nine is a sex toy. But ten is a pasta wheel. So, add up your scores and see how well you've done. Please, why not post below and see how well you scored? Because it's always nice to see how well people have done. If you've enjoyed it, please, again, do like, comment, share, and subscribe. Because I'm always happy to take input on what other things you might also like to hear quizzes on. Of course, these pub quiz ideas will also be uh, held live so these are some of the historical ones that I have done earlier this year but if you are in the Southampton area on a Tuesday evening you can come and visit the Hobbit pub where you can actually hear me do these quizzes live but all the same hopefully you've enjoyed yourselves tonight in listening to my ridiculous pub quiz ramblings and I will bid you all a fond farewell and hopefully we'll catch you again on the next time I do a pub quiz or play another game, who knows?